and I will be shaking my protein. Then. And so for me, this is the most important information Arl shares in this video. He says, don't Coach Greg, and in today's video, we're gonna be learning how do you train for mass, and to do so, we're gonna be listening to none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think that everyone knows when they get into training that you're not gonna go and become a champion from one day to the next. And so regardless if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, Everyone has the same goal. They want to look better to add muscle. And so even if you have no plans to ever set foot on stage to be the next Arnold or Chris Bumstead, you still can learn a ton of information from watching this video. The important thing is that you train the proper way, which is to train the basics. And so Arnold says what's most important is to focus on the basics. You don't need to do all these fancy exercises. You see these guys, Ryan Humiston, Jeff Cavalier, teaching you every different exercise. Focus on the basics basics and shock the muscle. And what he means by this is progressive overload. He's saying you shock the muscle, but really what that means is to train harder than last time. If you keep doing the same thing, you don't provide any extra incentive for the muscles to grow, you're not gonna build muscle. And so in shocking the muscle or adding more weight, lifting more reps, you're allowing yourself the reason, the incentive to build muscle. With hard work, you can achieve the goals and you can become successful. And so the key words is with hard work, you can be successful. It's not about a fancy programming with five reps in reserve. It's about putting in the work. Exercises for chest that I have always done. And so take the chest, for example, arguably Arnold's best body part, along with his biceps, he says he only did three exercises. Pick the most important exercises, focus on those and train them harder than last time. With muscles, the important thing always is to get the stretch. And so Arnold, he's a fan of full range of motion. Get the stretch, get the flex. He doesn't believe in doing partial reps. And then to have the dumbbells touch and then flex like you're doing the most muscle on top. And not only that, he likes to flex at the top to really get that squeeze. And so don't just lift a weight, lift with purpose. Use the shocking principle. If the body and if this chest knows that I'm gonna start with 130 I'm gonna go and start now with 315. Uh, no Arnold, so I'm not a fan of this opinion. Please warm up. Don't shock the muscles and show up and say, I know I'm shocking my muscles. I'm gonna go for my one rep max without warming up. That'll shock it. Not a fan of that point. And so I certainly don't think he's suggesting that we go and put our heaviest weight and do that first, that you still progressive overload. You do in fact warm up, but on some days, perhaps you do a drop set. Rather than just ending the set at 315 for 20 reps, why stop there? Perhaps take a plate off, do 225, then take a plate off again, 135. A triple drop set. And so Arnold, he's a fan of training harder than last time to shock the muscles. If you continue to do the same exact workout day after day without changing anything, there's no incentive to the muscles to grow. And so it doesn't have to be drop sets or forced reps. You'd simply have to progressive overload, which is to shock the muscle. You can shock the muscles in many different ways. Perhaps you pause the weight this time. Perhaps you go slower on the eccentric. You contract the weight at the extension. Better mind-muscle connection. Less rest between sets or even more rest between sets. And so there's several different ways to shock the muscles. It's not simply about changing the order, doing chest presses before doing declines. With a heavy weight and do just one rep, then have them pull off plates and a curl, but just enough that they cannot do two reps. Then pull off plates and do three reps, then pull off more plates and do four reps after that. And so for bicep curls, Arnold a fan of doing drop sets. He's starting with 275 pounds, maxing out, drops the weight, goes and does another set, drops it again, keeps going. He's clearly training beyond on failure. He's working harder than last time. That is how you really shock the muscles into muscle growth. But listen, if you're a beginner intermediate, you don't need to train like this. Save this most intense training for when you're more of an advanced lifter. But what all of us should do, whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, is always remember progressive overload, which means train harder than last time. When you're a beginner, you start out easy and slowly over time, you can gradually train harder, add more sets, more reps, more intensity. And what I really like about Arnold's physique or physiques of old is there's no sight enhancement oil. The muscles, they just look natural. Although they're enhanced, they look natural. Sounds like an oxymoron. But if you're a bodybuilder of today, you know what I'm talking about. The muscles, although bigger, they don't necessarily look 
better. We did six reps. So we picked up the 100 and did another six reps. Put them down and took the 90s and did another six reps. And then we picked up the 80s and we went all the way down to the 40s. And so Arnold, the fan of running the rack, he'll start with the 110s, get as many reps as he can, drop to the 100s, the 90s, 80s. By the time he's down to the 40s, he can hardly move. He has such a great pump. And so this, this an excellent finisher. But if you do try these, don't begin your workout with this. You'll be too exhausted, too tired to complete the rest of your workout. Squats is, I think, the most important exercise to create thighs. And for legs, squats, the king of all exercises. I have to agree with Arnold. There's no exercise better than the squats for building up the quads. But listen, if you can't do squats, perhaps we have lower back injuries. You're not comfortable with the exercise. You just don't like doing it. You can still build an amazing pair of legs without doing the squats. And so if you can do squats, well, of course, try them. But if you can't, don't fear, you can do leg presses, leg curls, leg extensions, a variety of other exercises. Just remember, progressive overload, train harder than last time, and I'm sure you can build an impressive set of wheels. I think the important thing is that you always go all out in every set and that you really you know, don't save yourself for the next set. And so for me, this is the most important information Arl shares in this video. He says, don't save yourself for sets later on. Work all out on every set. If you think to yourself, oh, I got 10, 15, 20 more sets to do, you're gonna train half ass. And if you go to the gym, you look around, that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a bunch of people saving reps thinking, oh, I'm natural, I can't train hard. Forget that, train harder than last time. Think, could you do another rep for $1,000? If the answer is yes, then do it. You're not being paid with money, you're being paid with a better developed physique. And so obviously, he doesn't mean on your warm up sets, he means on your hard working sets. And remember, the harder you train, the less volume you have to do. And I do believe intensity over volume every given day. If it wasn't the case, well, you could just go and do 100 sets. I call that cardio. And cardio, although it can build some muscle, if you're riding bikes all the time, you might build some quads, but certainly not as much as if you focus on lifting weights. Well, I think the most important thing is that you eat. And what about the diet? How do you eat to put on mass? That for every pound of body weight, I want to get one gram of protein. It worked best when I had five meals a day. And considering he did this in the 70s before the research supported this, that's very impressive as there are five opportunities for muscle protein synthesis to occur. And so if you spread out your protein, you eat it five meals a day in comparison to one or two, you're of course going to be able to build more muscle. If you give me a 10 ounce steak and have a little bit of vegetables, so to have some sliced tomatoes on it. And so Arnold was a believer in eating a variety of foods from all four food groups. He had meat in his diet, never skimped on the vegetables. And so he had a very balanced diet. He enjoyed eating three meals a day like that with the other two coming from protein shakes. And consider this, back in the 70s, protein shakes, they weren't the protein shakes of today. And so he'd take out his little shaker cup that he used at the bar to mix up alcoholic drinks, and he used that to shake up his protein. And every time he took a sip, he had to shake it up. This is the protein from the 70s. It's not like the protein today. You get HDLT protein, mixes up in seconds, tastes absolutely amazing. Imagine what Arnold would look like if he had protein from the 2020s back in the 70s. Probably have won 20 straight Mr. Olympia titles. Don't got time for a protein shake. You're in university, you don't wanna shake it up. Try a Seco bar. Arnold's saying two hours after the breakfast, he's hungry. Well, if he consumed one Seco bar, only 220 calories, 20 grams of protein, 15 grams of fiber. Imagine how full he would be. He'd be able to make it to that next class, get to the gym, train for two and a half hours. That's right, he's training two and a half hours. And I will be shaking my protein. And so Arnold in the 70s looked like he had to shake weight from the 70s, shaking it up back and forth all the time. Imagine seeing Arnold in the 70s, 240 pounds of muscle, six foot two, shaking up his drinks, taking sips all class long. I called the period before competition the most exciting period and expose your weak points. That motivates you then. And so Arnold says the three months dieting prior to competition, that is the most exciting time because at that point, he's dieting to see his weaknesses. What do I see underneath that fat layer? And so rather than thinking of it as a negative, oh, I don't like myself, he uses it as motivation. Just because you have weak points, it's not a bad thing. That's what fuels you. I don't like the size of my arms. That motivates me to go and train. I don't like my cardio. I'm going to train more cardio. 
And so rather than think body positivity, love your body no matter what, what's wrong with saying, yeah, I love my body, but I'd love it more if I had bigger biceps. I'd love it more if I ate healthier, if I did cardio. And so is that not being body positive to try to improve how you look, how you feel? It is really exciting to do that. And you feel that with hard work, you can achieve the goals and you can become successful. And so whether or not you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, your training goals, nutrition goals, they're all the same. What works, works. There's no different science. Once you become an advanced lifter, you don't have to progressive overload anymore. No, training harder than last time works for everyone. What you need to eat applies to everyone. Calories in, calories out. If you're in a surplus, you're going to gain weight. If you're in a deficit, you're going to lose weight. Can't break the laws of thermodynamics, no matter if you're training for the Olympia or it's your first time in the gym. And so please do the best you can. Remember to set realistic goals. Watch this video, watch his video, watch more and more freaking videos. Get the supplements, the cookbooks, the training books, coaching plans by me and my team. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. That would really help. Comment now, press that like button. Watch at least one bloom. Follow me on Instagram, Greg Doucette, IBU Pro. And until next time, I am out.